Hi, and welcome to Kathy TV. We are reviewing week three of Mesocycle 2 in the STS check-in. That brings us to discs 19, 20, and 21. So what do you think about those double wave loading techniques? They are intense, aren't they? I especially felt them on the bench press, shoulder press, and tricep extensions. The tricep extensions nearly wiped me out on that one. And then when we got to the back and biceps, I really felt it on barbell curls. How about you guys? Really intense stuff. But we are not finished pulling the tricks out of our sleeve yet. We have one more intensity technique for you in week four, and that is drop sets. And drop sets, the first set, you're gonna start at 80% of your one rep max. All three sets are gonna be done with 10 reps and 10 seconds rest in between. You'll start at 80% and the next two sets, each time you do it, you'll drop 20 to 30% of your one rep max. So you start at 80%, do 10 reps, rest just 10 seconds, do another set, 10 reps at 20 to 30% less of the weight you just had, and then rest 10 seconds and do 10 more reps at 20 to 30% less of that weight. And research has shown that in order to be able to continue doing 10 reps with just a 10 second rest in between, you need to drop your weights 20 to 30%. All right, so have fun with that this week. And right now we're gonna move on to question and answers. We have a question from Monica. Hi, Kathy, I love STS and I cannot believe how fast the program is going and what a difference I'm seeing in my strength. During many of your workouts, you talk about imagining the muscles you're working while you're executing the movements. I am mostly successful at this when it comes to the one arm row. I'm not sure exactly which muscles in my back I should be focused on the most. Are the lats correct for this or is it more center of the back? Would you please also highlight the differences between the normal row versus a horizontal row? Thank you so much, STS rocks. It sure does. Okay, Monica, let's review your question here. You wanna talk about the one arm row. So I'm gonna bring a weight right here and put one foot on the bench and the hand. So now I'm fully balanced. And I'm going, you have two choices here. You can be more dynamic with your movement, meaning the shoulder doesn't have to be retracted and depressed like this. You can leave your arm a little freer and be more dynamic in your pulling action, letting the shoulder drop a little bit, or you can maintain a good contraction here and just pull up and go down to this point versus the little bit of the dipping action in there. So that's a choice in itself. Now, as far as the grips that you were talking about, this would be considered your traditional vertical grip. This would be considered your horizontal grip and I'll review the differences in there. But keep in mind, all the muscles are always working in the back. You can just shift the focus a little more from one area to another. Now, in order to feel it most specifically, like first of all, I am gonna take this vertical row action, okay? And in this action, during the phase where you're actually lifting the weight up and down, you're feeling it mostly in your lats, in your teres major, and in your posterior deltoid muscle. But as you come out of the pulling action and you start to get into your peak contraction at the very top, that's when your trapezius muscles and your rhomboids really kick in at that highest peak contraction. But like I said, as you're going through it, other areas in the lats and stuff are kicking in more. And then your peak gets your rhomboids and your traps. Okay, so now to get those muscles to work the most effectively, instead of thinking of this pulling action as being a bicep curl, because that's what a lot of people do. And unfortunately on tape, it's very hard for me without touching you to show you how not to use your bicep as much, but I'm gonna try the best so that I can. Okay, now when someone uses too much bicep, what they'll do is start to think of bending their arm right here and pulling it into their armpit in this way. So it almost becomes a curling action for the arm like this. What I want you to think about is your back muscles. Think of your elbow drawing the weight back. I'm gonna put this down so I can show you. Draw the weight back so the elbow comes up to the sky versus collapsing the arm underneath the rib cage and bending it where you're getting your bicep action. Pull it back and feel that action of drawing that weight up so you really wing out that lat muscle and get, in, get your lat muscle working in full range of motion. Okay, so you're gonna take your position more dynamic or contracted and you're gonna pull up, remember, not underneath your body here, but bring that elbow back, see the difference there? A nice opening of the lat muscle getting into action. And remember, as you get to the top, squeeze and get a peak contraction so you really wake up that rhomboid and trap muscle. 
Okay, now if you're going into your horizontal in this position, you're going to bring the elbow out again. Instead of folding it right underneath you, think of that elbow coming up and out to the side. And you're going to feel that in the posterior delt a little bit more in the teres minor this time and the infraspinatus muscles. But they're all related. All of them work the back so you can't go wrong. Hopefully you found that helpful. In celebration of our upcoming STS shock cardio, I'd like to take, last week we did treadmill, high intensity interval training workouts and did a little feature on that. This week I'd like to just show you some ways you can shake up cardio circuit programs. I'll have a little mini one you can do at home. Um, and then some people like to go outside on open fields and just play and have fun with that. So I'll show you an indoor one and an outdoor one. And of course, the great benefits to this kind of training is that it boosts your metabolism, breaks up the boredom factor, of course, it builds better bone density. And you might ask yourself, well, what kind of circuits could I do? You could vary the intensity. You could vary the type of activities you could do. You could have it theme oriented and do all sport drills, whatever you want. Um, right now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a variation on intensity in the sense that I'm going to start you with a low impact activity, then go to a high impact activity, and then go into a plyometric activity. And I'll cycle through those because I like those because it kind of jumps around with the heart rate and it also builds better bone density. Okay, so what I would do just to give you a sample here is for your low impact activity, you could do anything. I'm going to start with just front kicks. Okay, and you obviously want to make sure you're very warmed up before you start these activities. So you'd warm up for about five to seven minutes with your classic warm ups, and then you'd start this circuit. So I would do this for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds doing the front kick. Of course, the first one I choose is much easier than the others because I'm still kind of coming fresh out of that warm up. And then when I was finished with that, my heart rate would be up, and I might just sidestep, take about a 10 second break, not too much longer than that. And then for my high impact activity, I'll choose jacks. And I'll just do jacks for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And then when I'm finished with those, I'll sidestep, let the heart rate come down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into my plyometric plyometric activity and then this time I'm going to choose squat jumps so you're going to touch the floor and you're going to come up and jump keep them all slow and controlled so you go down up two up three lift four five six and you're going to do that again for about 30 seconds you'll probably take the 30 instead of the 45 seconds on that one and you'll probably need a little longer recovery on the plyometric jumps, and there's not really a reason to explain why. As you can see, they wind you. Okay, after you've finished a cycle like that, what you could do is run through it again, those same three activities, for as many times as you want, or you could find three new ex exercises and then put them all together at the end, running through all six, and continue on like that. Add three more, then run from the top and do all nine, no matter how you slice it, it's a great workout.